To the angler wading these cold, clear waters, sharing the fishing with birds and bears, Alaska feels like wilderness without end. That's particularly true in Alaska's national parks and wildlife refuges. Within park boundaries, all plants, animals, and minerals are protected from human exploitation. The aim is to keep these resources safe for our enjoyment and refreshment, and for their own sake as creatures with a claim to endure. Fishing is a great way to enjoy the parks and get to know them better. But the supply of fish is not endless. It's replenished only by natural reproduction of native fish, no stocking. So anglers must keep fish only in accord with current regulations on size and numbers, and keep only what they're sure to eat. All other fish caught must be quickly and carefully released. The fishery and all creatures connected to it depend on this compact with anglers. No matter how strong a fish may seem, it's easily injured or overstressed. There's a right way of catching a fish, a right way of letting go. It starts even before you make that first cast. Use barbless hooks or flatten the barbs with pliers. Fish can then be unhooked with less chance of injury. And barbless hooks as a bonus penetrate better and make it easier to hook the fish in the first place. When you're fighting a leaping trout or a speeding salmon, the fight takes you out of yourself. Time seems suspended. The world reduces to rushing water and the fish at the far end of your line. But it's vital to fight the fish quickly. Prolonged fighting can cause injury not visible to the naked eye. Lactic acid builds up in the fish reducing its chances of survival when released. You can apply more pressure to the fish by fighting it with the butt section of the rod rather than the tip. Don't raise the tip, the weaker part of the rod, high in the air. As the fish tires, lead it out of swifter currents but don't let it scrape or bruise itself on shallow rocks. If its slime is rubbed off, deadly fungus or bacteria can attack the fish. The eyes, gills, and jaws are also highly vulnerable to injury. Your fish must be handled carefully and quickly. Take a moment to admire its architecture its artful pattern of colors and markings, but don't overdo it. Cradle the fish in your hand without squeezing it. Holding it upside down relaxes it and minimizes struggling. Keep the fish in the surface water while gently removing the hook with wet hands. photo is a good way to keep your catch by letting it go. But rather than lifting it for a hero shot, which could harm it, hold it in the water while someone shoots. Before releasing the fish, make sure it's ready to swim on its own. If necessary, revive it by moving it gently back and forth to get oxygenated water through its gills.
Many anglers use nets, and these are fine tools if properly chosen and used. A net of soft rubber is preferable to fabric. Rubber dampens the struggling of the fish and is less likely to scrape off its protective slime. Keep the net and fish in the water while unhooking. If you hook a really big fish, use special care. Since the fight lasts longer, the fish is more stressed, so apply all the pressure your tackle can take. The quicker the catch, the better. And heavier fish are more likely to be injured if lifted out of the water for unhooking or a photo. Never lift a big fish or any fish you're going to release by the tail or gill covers. If you fish from a boat, don't let a fish injure itself by bumping the sides or bottom of the boat. Many boat anglers use special cradle nets to immobilize the fish while unhooking. In this new century, wilderness is wild only because we keep it that way. Angling is one of the most intimate ways to experience Alaska's national parks and wildlife refuges. It's a privilege that depends on every angler's individual commitment to the fish we all catch, to waters and all things wild. <laughs>